Thanks, Renee. Uh, Governor, uh, there appears to be a developing constitutional crisis uh, regarding the $1.25 billion of federal funds money under the CARES Act. The Lieutenant Governor and Speaker of the House have sent a letter to the Mississippi Department of Finance telling them to hold on to the entire amount so the legislature can, quote, plan the constitutional appropriation of these funds. That seems to be a little different from how you see it in terms of who has control of that money. How do you respond to that? Yeah. Well, thanks for the question, uh, Dave. I appreciate that. Um, the, there's, there's no doubt that the um, legislature has taken steps. Uh, I wouldn't su suggest to you that it's a constitutional crisis. Um, I would tell you that uh, the legislature uh, has the ability to appropriate money uh, unless and until they delegate that responsibility uh, to uh, the governor or some other uh, entity. Uh, that's what has transpired in Mississippi. We have a state statute uh, which addresses all federal money in an emergency situation. We have, mul we have lots and lots of precedent over the last three years. Uh, excuse me, over the last 20 years that I have been in government, three different times uh, has that been the case. Um, and I think that's uh, important to note. But what I really want you to know, Dave, is um, I don't really give a damn who is in charge of this money. What I care about is the people who need it, and they need it now. We can't develop a system where the people who need the money cannot quickly access it. We cannot have a system that is not carefully constructed. Uh, we cannot afford any missteps. Uh, we have to be flexible because we don't know for sure if the virus is going to come back in the fall. And of course, that's what previous legislatures have contemplated when making decisions uh, in an emergency situation. Um, they recognize this, but the bottom line is, is we can't allow politics and bureaucracy um, to cost Mississippians the money that they so badly need, and they so badly need it quickly. Uh, we've been in contact with many leaders uh, in the legislative branch of government. Uh, it is um, certainly um, a developing issue, uh, developing very quickly, uh, but I will tell the people of Mississippi this. Um, I was elected to be governor, and I had no clue I was going to sign seven emergency declarations in the first 100 days in office. But I've had a lot of Mississippians call me and text me and say uh, that God's put, God puts people in places for a reason. And I will never stop fighting for the people of this state, no matter what it takes. For now. Uh, Nick June from Jackson Free Press has a question. Nick? Hi, uh, Governor. Uh, you see that the dam controls the money. Does this mean you will allow the legislature to determine the appropriations for those funds? We are going to work to ensure that we get these monies in the hands of the Mississippians who need them as quickly as is humanly possible. We're going to do it in a way where we protect on the back end, because we know the Inspector General is coming back and reviewing this. And so we've always planned to work with the legislature on the expenditure of these funds. Um, there is a, a tremendous amount of money. But I will tell you, it is incredibly important that in federal and state emergencies, in disasters, we as the executive branch of government have to have the ability to do what a chief executive does, which is execute the laws that have been passed by the legislature. They make the law, the executive branch executes the law. And as it currently exists, it is very clear that the executive has the ability um, and quite frankly has to have the ability uh, to expend those funds for the betterment of all Mississippians. Should they choose to uh, change that law, uh, that is certainly um, uh, their prerogative and, and we'll go from there. Would you veto it if they did? Pardon me? Would you veto the law if the bill is that? Bobby, you and I have been doing this dance for a long time. What I would tell you is uh, I'm not going to commit to doing anything until I actually see the language uh, that, that might uh, be in it. Um, but I will tell you, uh, if it means that I have to fight to get money to the people of Mississippi, 
uh, as quickly as possible. The ones who absolutely need it, the 170,000 Mississippians who have lost their jobs, the small business owners, many of whom didn't get the PPP program because they didn't qualify, the folks on the front lines, people like teachers who have spent their own money to upgrade their technology, spent their own money to upgrade their technology so they could do distance learning. People all across this state have made sacrifices and we have got to be smart but move expeditiously uh, to get this money to the people as quickly as possible. Governor, and how is this different than I think in around 2005, 2006 you were party to, I think you were one of the primary uh, plaintiffs in a lawsuit against the uh, Attorney General over his office was taking tobacco from the tobacco lawsuits right. and spending that money instead of, going, instead of it going to the legislature, you oppose that saying it should go to the legislature. Can you speak a little bit just how this is different? Sure, and that's, that's a good question, Bobby. I appreciate that. Um, it's, it's incredibly different for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, that particular money was diverted by a f judge in Jackson County um, to a private nonprofit with it, without it ever having gone through, um, gone to the legislature. That was money that was intended for the state, that was diverted by a judge, signed off by the Attorney General, without it going uh, to the state of Mississippi. This, this money, by the way, this money is no different than any other federal money that is being, um, that is spent in the state of Mississippi. This money is, is, um, has been appropriated by the federal government and it is to be executed under Mississippi law by the governor. It was the statute that I read to you yesterday, Bobby. And so, again, the difference is state money that was diverted by a judge, federal money that the legislature has contemplated and made a decision under our emergency management statutes which allow for the governor to execute these um, particular funds. These monies are no different than the monies that we utilize uh, for the State Department of Health. The State Department of Health has gotten a tremendous amount of resources from the federal government. Thank God that they have. The Mississippi Emergency Management Agency has gotten a tremendous number of federal dollars throughout this process. It is the federal dollars that allow me, under my emergency powers, to activate the Mississippi National Guard. If, if this legislation is overturned, if this legislation is changed, and it limits the executive's authority during a time of emergency, then what that means is every time there's a tornado, we'll be calling a special session of the legislature. Every single time there is a hurricane, we'll be calling a special session of the legislature. If the virus comes back in the fall, we'll be calling a special session of the legislature. And so I'm, I'm hopeful uh, that we can work together with our, our leaders um, uh, in, in the legislative branch. Uh, I will tell you, we, we are looking uh, for uh, more uh, ways in which to appropriately spend the money. And that's something that, that we are uh, very interested and open uh, to legislative input, in fact. Um, would have already done so. We haven't spent any of the money yet. We have a group of very strong private sector leaders uh, looking at various industries and various uh, sectors of our economy as to uh, what recommendations they make. Uh, Robert actually sits on uh, that group um, as uh, one of our uh, private sector leaders and private sector um, um, advisors as it relates to that. They don't have authority, but they certainly have uh, the ability to make good, strong recommendations, and and the the legislature uh, would have the same opportunities uh, under the the way in which the program was set up uh, in 2006, where we actually have an RFQ to hire a third party administrator to ensure accountability and ensure that before before we spend any dollar, that that third party administrator has the both accounting and legal expertise to uh, ensure that it meets the guidelines as set forth by the United States Department of Treasury because we know that the Inspector General is going to come and look at these monies. That's true whether Trump wins re-election or the other guy wins re-election. We know they're going to come back and they're going to look and um, we've just got to be uh, very smart and very, very capable. So.
continue on one more question. I'm sorry. So that's one of the complaints that we've heard from legislators, but with all due respect to the, the private group, that this is a group that's meeting, that as best we can tell, is not meeting publicly or doesn't plan to meet publicly, and they have sway in how the money is spent. They're saying that it should be uh, it's a more public forum where, it, where those issues were debated. Yeah, well, well I mean, the, the reality is that um, with the legislature originally scheduled to come back into uh, town on on uh, May the 19th, um, there is there uh, we believe is is adequate time. We've had many conversations with members of the legislature. We've gotten input and ideas. Uh, in fact, um, if you'll call Senator Angela Turner Ford, she's the current chairman of the Legislative Black Caucus. We did a call with her and several other members uh, of their leadership on Monday morning to get their ideas, and they've promised me that they're going to. Uh, put in writing what their ideas were. Um, you know, those uh, legislators that have been around, um, at least during my tenure in government, uh, will tell you that um, th they know how this was done under um, uh, previous uh, administrations and previous uh, legislatures. And, uh, and, and look, the, the legislature, it is the legislature's prerogative. If they want to change the law in our state, uh, they certainly have the prerogative to do so. Um, but I don't want a political fight and political battles to end up delaying Mississippians getting the money they so much need. Um, I'll tell you, Bobby, I, and, and I know legislators are hearing this too, but in my office, we get thousands of calls from folks that are crying, that are just trying every single day to find hope. They're just looking for hope. And so... I don't think there's going to be a, an awful lot of uh, sympathy from Mississippians over this uh, political battle that may be ensuing. Um, and and I'm, I will tell you, I'm just focused on trying to do what's right uh, for my constituents. Uh, I didn't ask to be governor during COVID-19. Um, I didn't know it was coming. Uh, but I do believe uh, in the power of prayer. And I believe that, um, that we are doing the right things to protect our state. Uh, from this horrible, horrible virus and this horrible disease. Uh, and I know that it's causing serious economic harm to many of my fellow constituents, and that just breaks my heart. And I'm going to do everything in my power uh, to fight for them uh, to try to get them this money as quickly as possible.